Blog Talk Radio. on another episode of Tarot Today Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you may be listening to us from around the globe. For the past 12 years, we've been bringing you the world of tarot. This is the official broadcast of the Tarot Guild. Now in our 18th year, the International Organization for Tarot Lovers, Students, and Professional Readers since 2004. With the world's only full-featured tarot social media networking platform, thetarotguild.com. I'm your host, Dax Carlisle, coming to you live from Tucson, Arizona. I'm a tarot advisor, numerologist, and a clinical hypnotherapist. And joining me, as always, is my fabulous co-host, Mary Brown. Mary is the vice president of the Tarot Guild and director of communications, a professional tarot reader and crystal Reiki master. And here she is live from Amarillo, Texas, the one, the only, Mary Brown. Happy Psychic Saturday, Mary. (laughs) Happy Psychic Saturday, Dax, and everybody listening today. This is exciting. I'm always excited for Saturdays. Mm-hmm. It's my favorite. I love just hanging out. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the uh, porch here. It's a, you know, 80 degrees actually. It says on the thermometer there. You know, I know some people are freezing in other parts of the country. This is why we like Tucson, Arizona. You know. <laughs> mm. I woke up to um, snow and ice everywhere, and then a few hours later, mm. now the sun is shining. You know, if you don't like the weather, it'll change in a couple minutes here in Amarillo, Texas. We get four seasons in the course of usually about a week. It's mm. fun. <laughs> Meteorologists love this town, <laughs> you know, because it's like, oh, there's always something weird happening there. <laughs> Oh, well, I, I remember being in Dallas, and I flew into Dallas, and it it snow everywhere, and I mean, even having trouble getting to the car and everything like that. And then by the end of my stay, you know, a few days later, it was like eighty five degrees. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, yep. they got crazy weather in Texas. <laughs> it is so true. It's so true. We got, you know, yeah. everything's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, um, so on today, I did. Well, I was good. Go ahead. Oh, hold on. I didn't finish the spiel. Hold on. I got to do the rest of the yeah. intro here. We the are spiel. a live. We are a yeah. We are a live call-in show. <laughs> we got to give everybody the phone number at seven one four eight one six four six two eight. That's seven one four eight one six four six two eight. As soon as you get through, press one on your dial pad. That lets us know you want to be live on air. Put you up in the caller queue. Otherwise, we assume you're just listening to the show, and that's perfectly fine as well. And you can join us in the chat room on the Tarot Guild website, thetarotguild.com. Just click on chat or open a new tab in your browser, type in thetarotguild.com forward slash chat, and you can join us in the chat room and chat with us that way as well. And what were you going to say, Mary? Card of the day? I am so excited to tell everybody my card of the day because also. the really exciting thing was I took I had to take the dog to the vet, you know, got a weird chihuahua with weird chihuahua issues. I come back and there is a deck waiting for me to review it and it is Razuli, my favorite Razuli artist, my favorite Oracle deck artist, Razuli's great 
Eastern Oracle. So I thought, oh, boy, I'm going to draw the card of the day from that. It just arrived, and it's so beautiful. And the card, the message is build on your inner strength. Light up the sky of your mind. You know, there's a perfect kind of phrase that Rosalie would use. But, oh, my gosh, this card is so great because really, you know, this is the message of it. Success comes when you have confidence in your ability and are determined enough to follow through. You can achieve your goal when your mind embarks on great and worthy courses with assured hope and trust. Believe that you are uh, endowed to attain what you want. Even if you don't gain something directly, keep going. You're going to ultimately succeed. And if you doubt your ability, you probably won't achieve what you're after. Saw that message and thought, oh, my God, I can apply that to, like, 5,000 different things, right, (laughs) that we see in life, you know, that we see modeled, you know, in other people's behavior and sometimes in our own, you know. So I just thought it was a beautiful message for today and a lot of food for thought. And you have that posted on the Psyche Talk Radio Facebook group. Yes. Am I right? Yes, I do. Yeah, and if awesome. people haven't, you got got to join the Facebook group. We have a page in a group like that page. Join the group. Join the conversation. And, of course, I like to mention the Tarot Guild's page and group. You can like the page, join the group. 7,000 members on Facebook. Just search for Tarot Guild, the Tarot Guild. You'll find us. And, uh, oh, I got the seven of wands. So, you know, someone or something may challenge what you believe today. And so this card Mm. is saying, stand up for yourself. There's a good reason you feel so strongly about this issue, whatever that issue may be. And I, from the moment I woke up this morning, Mary, I've been having a seven of wands day. It's like coming from every direction. (laughs) Well, but, well, you get the higher ground, right? Yep. With the seven of wands. And if you, you know, if you just stick with your integrity and your inner strength, you know, it's going to serve you well. You're going to get through this. You know, you stand your ground, folks. Stand your ground. If you're having a seven of wands day like I am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, hey, should we tell everybody, our guest, before we bring him on today? Absolutely. I'm really excited, and I know some of you have seen the posts about this, and you've seen the the review of the deck. Yes, it's finally here. Today, we have Daniel E. Loeb, the deck creator behind the amazing Rota Mundi Tarot the Rosicrucian Arcanum. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about him before we bring him on. Daniel Loeb is a scholar, uh, an occult author, and spiritual mentor. And you know, may even you may have even read some of his stuff that he wrote under a pseudonym um, while working in public service, and that pseudonym was D.W. Prudence. And he also retired after serving 20 years Mm. in the U.S. Air Force. Yes, he's a veteran like Dax and I, so that's another bonus, (laughs) bonus of having a veteran in Cairo. Right? It's a... I love that. And now he's a full-time author and instructor on topics related to Kabbalah, uh, alchemy, and tarot. He also graduated from the Hypnosis Training Institute of Central California in 1994 and from the Therapeutic Learning Center School of Massage in 1997. What doesn't this guy do? Let's bring him on and find out. (laughs) What do you think, Dax? I know. Let's bring him on. Welcome, Daniel. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Oh, we're Hi. so excited to have you here today. <laughs> so, you know, what, one thing that we like to start with, because, you know, a lot of, the, you know, tarot readers and enthusi- enthusiasts that listen to the show, we like people to tell us a little bit about what it was um, that drew them to tarot. Because, my goodness, you know, that, that what I just gave out, folks, was a really short, condensed version of 
everything that you've done, <laughs> right? But how did tarot figure in? How did that click for you, I guess, is the way to put it? Well, I started out with uh, hypnotherapy, and that got me into exploring the mind and everything and dowsing it, you know, dowsing the subconscious, like using pendulums and stuff like that. And then I just got into tarot, tarot and started looking into the symbolism and used it as like a divination tool. And uh, as I learned more and more about it, I learned how it interfaced with the Kabbalah and then later alchemy and then just kept on exploring all those subjects and wanting to put all the pieces together to understand it. And I mean, basically, that's how I built my decks is I make decks that I like based off of all of the mm. symbols and things that I'm studying and uh, that sounds trying so to understand familiar. all the concepts. Yeah. What were you going to say, Dax? Oh, <laughs> sound I, familiar? I, I said, it sounds so familiar. You know, I mean, don't, doesn't that seem familiar to you too? It's like we we all go on this tarot journey, and it happens differently, and everything like that. But it it there's a similarity to a lot of people's stories. You know, I feel I identify with Daniel's journey and you and what do you think? Yeah, it's a, it's that connectedness. And, and I just love that you started with studying the mind and it led you there. Um, you know, this deck of yours, the road of Mundi tarot, and my goodness, the book guys, you know, Check out the deck. Get the deck if you like the deck, but really get the deck anyways because you get this book. This book that looks to me like I – how how much time did it take to write it? I could not write this book in my lifetime, okay? <laughs> That's what I think of it. You know, do you feel that – all of those things that you were attracted to in tarot, the symbology and then that leading to Kabbalah, leading to alchemy, all of those things. Is this book like kind of, you know, a real good, I guess, like, yeah. um, accumulation right? of all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I mean, because it's, putting made, all the, it's made me speechless. All the together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's um, so much to it, you know, numerology and everything like that, and it's a mystical system, a mystical system, and it's also a way to, you know, brainstorm ideas and extract stuff out of your subconscious. Where I think it's got so much potential and can be used by people, you know, in many ways. And as we keep learning and growing, we'll find new ways to, you know, use it and apply it into our lives. And, you know, here's something I wanted to ask you about, because I've noticed a lot of other, like, tarot, I want to say tarot tube, you know, YouTube <laughs> reviewers, you know, a lot of them are like, you know, they, 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 they're they like, this is a deep study deck, deep study yeah. deck. And and I I agree with that. And I'm wondering also, yes, it's absolutely that, but you also want people to do readings with it, even if it's like just, you know, in themselves you know, kind of yeah. self-exploration, personal development kind of thing. Yeah, and I do readings on it. You know, I do, I, I could see where mm -hmm. people, if they're just bombarded with all the stuff and are, haven't seen all the symbols before, get overwhelmed that they're like, yeah, it's a super study deck. But uh, how I read tarot, you know, every the cards have a different meaning every single time that you throw it out there, you know, based on how your intuition is interpreting it. So, I use this deck and it just has got so much stuff to draw on that you throw out one of the cards, you know, like from the major arcana and then you could go off of like the regular Rider Waite Smith type stuff or you could look at the Kabbalah or you could look at the Hebrew letters of numerology where there's just so much different stuff that you could draw from and then when, uh, you know, whatever fits the situation, that my subconscious is going to tell me this is the thing to focus on and, you know, ignore all the other data that doesn't seem like it fits right. So, I mean, I, I use it to do yeah. readings and think it's handy, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say, Dax? Oh, nothing. I was just listening and I was just agreeing, you know. It, it, I do the same thing well, with the it... numerology and... 
Yeah, and yeah, I and involved. I think that that it, that's one thing that I just you know popped out to me immediately as I was going through the cards. I'm like, okay, this is incredibly useful. <laughs> this is great because you know with modern tarot decks that are out there, you know, um, you know, I love all kinds of tarot decks. I do, you know, and I don't care if it's um, unicorns on it. I love unicorns. You know, sure. You know, and all kinds of things, but not always do we um, get a lot of, I, I would say, you know, sure, mystical symbols, you know, astrological symbols, Kabbalah symbols, that, that kind of stuff. You know, we don't always get that in a lot of the decks that are out there. So a lot of times what you get is a deck that you're reading based on, you know, what you already know of tarot, what your reading style already is. Um, but then when you try to draw off the imagery in the cards, you're like, it's a unicorn. There's a unicorn in your future. That, no, that can't be right. You know, <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and so I do, I did ask you that because I wanted people to kind of, you know, consider that um, this isn't just a deep study deck. This is a deck that you might find yourself going to. This could be one of your go-to, you know, decks you work with um, very easily. And I feel like, and I don't know, I'm going to find out if it's true for me, um, because the Kabbalah associations that we see on the on a lot of the cards in this deck aren't ones that are just, you know, immediately there in my, you know, library in my head, you know. Um, you know, I don't draw draw on those associations like ever, I have to look them up. You know, it was like the one thing, the one set of correspondences with um, tarot that, you know, quite honestly, I was like, I can't absorb all this, you know. And now I think you give this the opportunity to to absorb it by working through it. We work with through, you know, we work with something often enough, then, you know, that familiarity, and then it, we get into that sort of rhythm with our head. Um, was it, you know, it, the other thing I want to talk about with this is the Rosicrucianism, you know, and was that something that was easy to sort of ferret out in a sense to be able to write like a a, sort of a timeline story, you know, kind of kind of give us like the highlights of it because it seems to me um, the Rosicrucianism in today's world goes down so many different paths and it seems like the, there's a lot of differences. So was that easy to make a Rosicrucian deck when there seems to be different aspects of it out there? Well, mainly I stuck with the... Uh main Rosicrucian, you know, the original three manuscripts that the Rosicrucians wrote. And then I mm -hmm. traced it through the other Rosicrucians later on, like uh, um, Alephus Levi and then Rider Waite and then Pappas. You know, I've I've read like Pappas's book, you know, mm -hmm. first and was like, like that a whole bunch, you know, it's, I mean, I, and then I wait, tra translates most of the topics of like alchemy and kabbalah he's he's got lots of books that he writes on that so i was familiar with all those authors and then i finally sat down i'm like okay I, my mind wants to put all the pieces together so then i'm trying to like trace it back and compare the work of alephus levi and then pappas and wait and how uh they're all rosicrucians along the same line you know and i finally saw that and like this the tarot is kind of like you know this stream of tarot is goes through like the rosicrucian stuff and even like the both that uh that's alex alistair crawley got from uh the golden dawn you know so it branches mm -hmm. off into that too so i kind of like traced it backwards and then compared it to the uh actual manuscripts that the original rosicrucians wrote and stuck to that as like i guess it's like the, the doctrine of it you know instead of like each of the mm -hmm modern organizations but looked for the original one as at the manuscripts on their alchemist view and stuff of the world and then trace the tarot through its later development among like their like disciples or followers 
That makes a lot of sense. That that is probably the easier path. <laughs> you know, now that I think about it, because I think it would be a mess if we if you had to take into account everybody's version these days. You know. Mhm. And I wanted to add and I did, something, Mary. I, I I'll was, go for it. Well, uh, uh, only before we get off of that, because Daniel just you know mentioned about uh, you know the I, I think you said the alchemist view of the world. Was it alchemist, or did you use a yeah. different word there? Yeah, okay, I I just making alchemist. sure. And, and so I was just going to ask you about that. Simply, you know, it's like, what would be the alchemist's view of the world compared to the rest of us? Well, I'm, I'm looking at like the Rosicrucians at their time period, like the 1600s. That the uh, philosophies that they were looking at was like the ones that came from alchemy of. Uh, you know all the all the things like the chemical wedding and that their interpretations of uh, it's kind of like a mystical science. So the, they mm. use those metaphors mm-hmm. basically, and then uh, it was also a time like right after uh, the Zohar was made, which is the main Jewish Kabbalah work, and then uh, Heinrich Kunrath oh, was yeah. like he he wrote his books and stuff that I think that the Rosicrucians borrowed from you know like because his stuff was published like maybe 10 years before the rosicrucian manifesto started coming out so i think it was just like the thought that was within their society at that period of time where they were interp where the um like intellectual or mystical thought at that time was Mm -hmm. in alchemical alchemical metaphors and I guess they have grimoires and stuff too around that time, but the Rosicrucians stuck to like the alchemy. Most of their stuff was about uh, alchemy and challenging the gold makers of their time and trying to like purify like their alchemical thought processes. And uh, they also had Kabbalah in it too. And uh, the later groups, you know, of uh, like Pappas where they were all mm-hmm. into the Kabbalah more so than the alchemy portion, probably. And especially once chemistry came out, people kind of like took the spiritualness out of alchemy and just had it like a science. But yeah. it was back in the time when they still had every everything was all mystical understanding through alchemical metaphors, and they were it was all secret stuff that it was dangerous to be a, an alchemist that that burn you up the stake and stuff over. So they kept everything coded into symbolism and everything. And I was like, yeah, these, these things, dessert, these symbols need to be on tarot cards because that's exactly what the tarot is, is expressing yeah. all the symbolic stuff that you extract things out of with your subconscious mind, trying to understand the mental puzzles, which I think is what, even a tarot spread is, is that we just make a mental puzzle that we have to solve and then compare it to people's lives to make something useful out of it. Mm. I like that. Now, because, you know, look, you're, you're well versed on the mind. You've studied psychology, all, all of these things. Do you think people pick that up? Even if they even if they don't know, you know, the, if the symbols are there in the card, and, may, and maybe they're not a an expert on it, but they're but they're laying out a spread, they're trying, you know, ostensibly to answer a question, right, by doing yeah. a, a tarot reading. Does yeah, it, do, I think you, it, do you think the mind great. deciphers it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I think that you're exercising your mind, and I think that because I've read tarot, that it's helped me in like regular jobs and in the Air Force and things, you know, just like that, just because I've learned to use my mind to take in abstract information and then process it and make something deep and meaningful out of it, you know. So if if you could yeah. get something that says like tooth, squirrel, and then try and come out with some, you know, great <laughs> philosophy out of it, then uh, when you get real data that, you, you know, is – easier to discern than you could put together better stuff. So I think that it helped me to really think outside of the box where people try to solve things based off of like a book answer or something, you know, or some college book and be like, well, they have this. And it it lets me like look at 
the idea is, you know, not just off of I'm reading this author's point of view, but can think outside the box and, you know, be more like a yeah. peer with them, you know, instead of right. a follower. I, I think it really hey, you teaches know, you how to use your mind. Yeah, I, I love that. I absolutely love it. Did you ever do, you know, because I was in the Army, I used to do tarot readings in the barracks. Did you ever do tarot in the Air Force? Yeah, I have sometimes, but not that often. And uh, I did, did teach, like, hypnosis and stuff. They were op- more open to that. Mm. The, uh, the, yeah. You know, like, when we're sitting in Iraq and stuff like that, I I made, like, a hypnotherapy course and did that for like two months and taught everyone to be hypnotherapist. And I also did that Sweet. in Greenland. And I would do a wow. spring tarot and read tarot and stuff too, because it's you know part you know it's part of the mind. Yeah, and I like that. I'm going to use that. I'm feeling that tarot is part of the mind, you know, because I think that is so true. It's so incredibly useful, especially. I mean, dude, you're in Iraq, you know. I mean. <laughs> You need to be doing something with your mind, right? You know, because of all yeah. the other stuff going on around you. And, you know, I have found tarot to be something that just really, I think because, and I want your take on this, because to me it's like objective, you know. Yeah. If I consult the cards, I'm getting like objective advice. The, the cards don't, you know, they don't have an agenda with me. They're not trying to make me make a decision one way or the other. They're not emotional about it. And it's hard to get that, like, in real life from, like, the people in our lives, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, you know. I, that's what I like about it, too. And I think that, like we were talking about earlier, that it really trains people to use your mind. And all things like psychology yeah. and stuff, or even, like, hypnotherapy, it's we make these names and say subconscious or superconscious or id and stuff, but those are just terminology we humans make to try to describe the mind but really you know we're just using our minds so i mean you don't have to go to school to be a psychologist in order to practice using your mind it's just you you know using it and i think that tarot is a great tool for that because it's a mixture of objective and subjective information that you throw it out there and you look at objective stuff that you picked at random that you wouldn't have considered otherwise, you know, using your own mind or, you know, problem solving. But then uh, you also have to look at it with the your subjective, you know, mind of mm. using your intuition to make sense of the objective stuff that's thrown out there or vice versa, that you have these intuitive feelings that you have to use your analytical portions of your mind to process to make sense of. Yeah, no, that, that, I love that. I love, like, <laughs> I love that. You don't have to be a psychologist to use your mind, people. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can awesome. learn it anyway. And I right? Think that, <laughs> mm, yeah. What I like about my cards, you know, of when I put the uh, right away images next to the Kabbalah to show, like, where it's at is that you don't have to memorize the entire Kabbalah before you start doing it, you know, that as you just continue seeing yeah. those cards, you see where it's at on the Kabbalah and how it relates to it, you know, that it's just there. So, you know, you're yeah. naturally just reading the decks, you're going to pick up that stuff. Yeah, and that that's what I mean. Like, I needed this deck <laughs> because it is right there. I'm going to – and there's something about that, about the visual. Like, I feel like it's almost like the way you put the the kind of smaller version of the Rider Waite card um, next to, you know, the what, what path it's related to on the on the Tree yeah. of Life or in some of these cards with, with Sephiroth um, – Having the visual, I think, sticks in some way, maybe better. I don't know. But I yeah. kind of felt like this I can pick up. This I can – I might be able to remember this, <laughs> you know, finally. Yeah, so, especially for uh, so, visual learners. Yeah. Oh, you know, that's a good point. That is a good point right. because, yeah, maybe there is so a, many of us a are. bit of a difference. Yeah. Oh, They're my probably gosh. especially people that 
do the, the like tarot. You probably chose it because you're into visual stuff. So there's probably a wow. lot of visual learners use the tarot. I didn't even think of that either. Oh, my goodness. Interesting, right? You just made a really good point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's like sometimes somebody just has to say it, you know, and then it makes sense. <laughs> but, yeah. um, and here's a weird question that I feel almost like it's like I got to ask it. And it's like, okay, so the Rotomunda Tarot, we're talking – we're talking about Kabbalah in it, uh, the Rosicrucians in it, and it's like, you know, kind of, sort of, like a religious kind of thing. They don't, you know, like, what do people have to know about that? Like, you don't have to be a religion, you know, person, right? Or a religious person or religious. Any, yeah. Any, yeah. anybody can use this, right? They don't have to believe something, right? Or do they? What do you yeah. think? No, I, I think that that's what the Rosicrucians were doing was trying to do like a worldwide reform and stuff because it was after like the Protestant Reformation, but they still mm-hmm. weren't Protestants because they worshipped like a divine feminine also that they would have been killed for, you know. So it's mainly yeah. like – even like what Jesus taught is that it's about – building your own relationship with God and finding your own spiritual journey. It's not about following dogma, you know, that right. it, it's, we have these things that you could, these concepts that are like universal human concepts that they try to explain through the symbolism of Kabbalah or through the symbolism of alchemy, you know, and uh, it can make sense, you know, especially that's why I have that chapter on alchemy that explains how alchemy works, that you're boiling water and how it transforms and stuff, because that's the metaphors they're using, but they're just metaphors. You know, you could use a sports metaphor or something like that to understand the things, you know, the same too. So it's just about growing in your spirituality and learning to use your mind and finding balance and stuff. And everybody's journey is going to be unique and different, you know? Sure. And it was it was a weird synchronicity for me. Like I'm reading I'm reading your book, and I get to this like whole chapter on alchemy. You know, uh, seem like you really really like break it down. You don't like kind of do what a lot of authors have done. It's like and alchemy, and then moving right along. You know, like they, yeah. don't, they don't they don't go into things, and you get into the seven classical planets and everything. And what's so weird for me is like. You know, sometimes we have those moments where it's like, this was supposed to happen. I was supposed to read this book because yeah. I, I'm studying the Sola Busca with, with Giordano Berti, and he teaches like spiritual alchemy. And we're just getting into that. I just learned the phrase Solve Coagula. And then I see uh-huh. there it is in your book, and, and you explain it even further. And I'm like, how is this happening? This is exactly what I needed to be reading. You know, is there like a – do you consider this like a mystical thing you've created here, this deck and book set? Because I feel like I'm having a mystical experience with it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, I mean, Mary's having a religious experience. Look out. <laughs> yeah, it's a – mysticism is like, you know, that's what it's all about, is trying to understand these things and do your spiritual journey and – make sense of the universe. So hopefully I can inspire that in people and hopefully people will find something that they like and be like, Oh wow. Alchemy is kind of interesting or, you know, look into Kabbalah or, you know, or just the tarot, you know, or pretty pictures. Yeah, exactly. If it's just the pretty pictures, (laughs) it's okay. (laughs) So I want to know how long did it take you to, do this how long did it take you to create this deck and write this book because again i couldn't do this in my lifetime there's no way it's too much too too much too mature work really i mean this is like you should get a prize you know (laughs) i want to give you a prize for it (laughs) yeah i i don't know just built up over time i did make like um the major arcana with the rider weight decks and stuff in a previous like smaller deck that I tried working on before. And then uh, after I wrote the alchemistic woodcut tarot, 
I started working on this book. So once it goes, once that book went to the publisher, it was like a year before that came out. So I wrote for like a whole other year doing that before that book came out. And then I continued writing for like another year. And then, uh, so, and then it, after this one was submitted, it probably took like another year for it to actually come out. So it's probably like a three year journey on putting all this stuff. But I mean, a, lo- a lot of stuff like how I quote things and everything, that's probably I got from when I was working on my master's degree that I learned how to write better of finding mm. sources and documenting everything and trying to put the pieces together. So it is just like accumulation of all of my academic studies plus all of my mystical studies and everything that I've done in my life and just trying to make sense of things. Well, I love it. I really I really love that. And and it's so great that you you source everything and I don't know if you looked at other things that are out on the market, but a lot of people just talk off the top of their head and they never tell you where these where the concepts they're that they're sharing are coming from. You know, it's like yeah. you just put it out as like fact and that drives me crazy because then I gotta do the research, you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, I like, I, really uh, have... I like to make sure that everybody knows where everything's at. And I mean, for one, going to college is I want you have to support your thesis. So I want to make sure that I'm not just rambling off something without being like, yeah, this is why I think that that's what the opinion yeah. was of these people 400 years ago or so. You know, so I, I want to do that. But the other thing is, I don't want I want everybody to have the same experience like I did, but I don't want them to have my experience. You know, I I want Mm. to inspire people to have an experience like mine and to look at the books and find meaning for themselves. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be a guru and have people be like, I'm going to follow what he said. Now I want people to learn to think on their own, you know, and I'll, I'll see a lot of that with Kabbalah because it's, you know, within like Judaism and, It is kind of like orthodoxy, too. So you'll get people that are, like, trying to follow stuff exactly, you know, and be like, Isaac Larea said Mm. this. And you're like, okay, but you don't want to just go by what he said. You want to be like Isaac Larea and explore these concepts and come up with something, you know, unique on your own and, you know, have an epiphany, not just repeat somebody else's opinion. So I don't want people to repeat my opinion that I said this is right. I want people to go and look at the stuff on their own and look at the things that inspired me so that they could be inspired to make something better. Yeah, that's, to, to me, you know, that is, you know, that's the mark of a real mentor. You know, that's the mark of a real teacher, you know, um, to to be able to in, inspire students to to take it further you know, in yeah. their own way, you know, so that that's incredibly invaluable. Do you teach? Do you teach? You should be teaching if you don't teach, or it'd be great if you were teaching if you're not. Right. Well, that's I, what I was thinking. You know, I, when I get chances, you know, I do, but uh, I think that whenever I'm just doing readings and stuff, it's pretty much like a quick lesson for everybody, you know, that I try and explain everything, especially with my cards and I'll be like, this is what, you know, give people like a quick rundown of Kabbalah or Alchemy or whatever cards are coming up Mm -hmm. and explain things and then try and demonstrate how it fits into their lives and can answer their questions. So I try to make it useful. But uh, I was was trying to do it like go to like stores and stuff right before COVID hit. But then, you know, everything's been closed up for a while. So, yeah, I. Uh, Mary, I was you, just going to say, if you, if you think about it, uh, he's already teaching through his book and his deck. He uh, he he definitely <laughs> is. He definitely mm. is, and I just think he's cool. And it would be cool to take a course. <laughs> <laughs> if he had one. Awesome. <laughs> you. you would take his course if he had one. Yes, I understand. I, I would. Understand so if you ever do, yeah. <laughs> Let us, but that's one of the great. Let us know. That's one of the great things about tarot. It's like it's you know you guys were talking about that and talking about how uh, you, you know Daniel was saying how he, he he wants people to develop their own 
uh, opinions on things and think and stuff like that. And I think tarot is like the ultimate tool for that, for learning yeah. and just, um, you know, digesting and making it your own. You know, they say you put a, a hundred uh, tarot readers in a room, you'll get 78,000 different ideas, you know. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's so true. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's so true. We take it all in our different ways. So, how can people, um, is there any particular website we can give out and, and promote for you for people to, to follow your work? I mean, what's, what's something's got to yeah, be I, next, too, right? Yeah, I have my uh, dwellwithprudence.com is like my w- main website and then from there it's got links to each of my decks and stuff that I've designed and then to our Etsy store and nice. I usually try to put up events and stuff on there. I haven't been updating just that much lately. But then otherwise i got my Facebook account and I'm pretty open if anybody emails me or you know sends me messages. I try, I try really? to be on the earth and just answer people's questions and help people figure out, you know, on their journeys. Aw, that's so cool. It's really cool to be accessible and approachable like that and not be, you know, some stuffy old, you know, mystic guru. Professor. (laughs) Guru. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for for coming on the show today and and sharing your time and your and your wisdom and your insights with us and we'll be sure to put those links out there. Everybody be sure to check out the Rota Mundi Tarot deck. It's out from Red Feather. You can go to the Schiffer site and find it there. You can find it on Amazon. And we'll have the links up to to Daniel's um, site as well, so you can keep up with him and, you know, ask him a question if you need to. Sounds like a pretty friendly guy. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thanks, have a great one. You too. Bye. Bye-bye. That was terrific. Oh. He's so cool. You were having such a great time. I was just listening to you. (laughs) I know. I know. And I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. Because, you know, man, it's like this deck. It's like a million questions. I'm having a mystical experience over here. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm like chatterbox. Because I'm like, we have Daniel Lowe. we got to talk to him. But anyways, uh, we mm-hmm. rolled past the bottom of the hour. Should I tell people what's coming up on the Psychic Talk Radio Network? Do you think? And real should... quick, uh, okay. while you're doing that, let's mm-hmm. give folks an opportunity to call into the show. We have some callers. We're going to go to uh, the phone lines in just a second, we got 781 is the first caller. And if you're listening live, you can call in right now, 714-816-4628. And we'd love to take your call. Remember to press 1 on your dial pad. That lets us know you want to be live on air with us. kind of raises your hand on the switchboard, puts you in the caller queue. And so we'll give you some time, folks that are listening live, to call in, 714-816. Four six two eight, and Mary's going to tell us about the upcoming shows on the network. Take it away, Mary. Oh yes, it's pretty exciting this week on the Psychic Talk Radio Network. Our next show is actually tomorrow, February thirteenth at eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern. It is the Magic Universe Show with your host Sharona Rapsic, and she has a special guest on. You may have heard of him, numerologist and tarot master, Dax Carlisle. (laughs) Who is it? (laughs) Who is this mystery guest? It's Dax Carlisle. And they're going to be discussing the lover's card and the world year number six and also taking your calls for Mm. free tarot readings. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I know I'm going to be tuning into that. And then... After that, on Monday, February 14th, is Valentine's Day. Uh, We have the Wisdom of the Soul show 
coming on at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern with your host, Janice Fuchs. And that is going to be uh, it for Monday. You know, um, Catherine Hahn, the host of Spiritual Guidance Radio, just so you don't forget, she's still on break. She's going to be back with live episodes March 7th, so she's coming back pretty soon. Um, but also, I'll be back next Saturday for another episode of Tarot Today Radio Show with another exciting guest. We're going to have Nancy Antonucci on talking about her fabulous book, Tarot Rituals, Ceremonies, Ideas, and Experiences for the Tarot Lover. And, of course, taking your calls for free tarot mini readings. And, Dax, you're not going to be able to be there next Saturday, are you? I've got a memorial to go to, unfortunately. I would love to talk to Nancy because the last time I interviewed her on air was, gosh, a decade ago. Right? Right? Oh, I know. Is it, you know, well, give me some questions that you want to want me to ask for you on behalf of you, and, and I can do that too. But, yeah, I'm going to miss you <laughs> being there. But awesome. anyways, folks. You can find all those shows listed by going to psychictalk.net forward slash upcoming. Back to you, Dax. Awesome sauce. Oh, well, you know, we have a lot going on at the Tarot Guild, as you all know, if you've been listening. And uh, unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, we had to cancel tonight's live, the Saturday Night Live. However, uh, I'll be on Tuesday. So we'll have a live on the group. That's the one with the 6,800 members, the Tarot Guild group on Facebook. So go ahead and join the group, and then you will be notified, and you can pop on a live with me this coming Tuesday. And so, yeah, I can't be here Saturday, but I can be here Tuesday, Mary. So that'll be fun. I also wanted to mention, you mentioned Valentine's Day. It is the month of love, and we are doing a two-for-one tarot sale. So just go over to the tarotguild.com. You'll see the big banner, two-for-one tarot. Basically, grab a friend, a colleague, significant other, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, family member, whomever, and everything is basically two-for, Mary, for the month of February. So uh, you could get with another colleague and and uh, split the cost of uh, tarot reader certification or um, enroll in our tarot course. I also have a numerology report special for uh, couples, but it doesn't have to be couples. It could be you and, uh, as I said, you know, a coworker, your boss even, uh, family, friends. And I do two reports. I do this, you know, every February where I do two reports and charts. So I do a full chart and report on each of you. And we're going to look into details of your life, life purpose, career, relationships, strengths and weaknesses, tendencies and potentials. And I can also do a compatibility analysis between the two charts. So if you've always wondered the the dynamic, you know, between you and your significant other, but it could also be between you and your parents, you and your children, you and your coworkers whomever you would like. And in addition to that, I'm adding in a 40-minute private tarot session with me in addition to the two reports. So that's a $199 value, just $147 right now. And uh, I think that's it. I think I covered everything except for private readings. Um, The same thing is with my private readings. You get two for one right now. So... You could keep it for yourself for a reading later on, the second one, or you could gift it to somebody, you know, or you and a friend could uh, split the cost. So like a, a typical 40-minute reading, I charge 120 so that would be 60 bucks each, just as an example there. You'll find all that on thetarotguild.com. Just look for that big uh, red banner, two-for-one tarot. And the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, our live Zoom workshops and Q&As. It's going along very nicely. We've got a lot of great ones coming up. Again, on the tarotguild.com, look for the big white banner that 
and you'll see the like uh, <laughs> the little blue people sitting in their classroom here, and it says uh, live Zoom workshops and Q and A's. Click on that, and you can read the whole list. We already have some in the can. You can listen to our Learn Them On for Tower Readers. It's available right now with Brenda Elizabeth. Uh, Ethics for Professional Tower Readers is available as well. Mary Brown and I did that. And we just had our first live monthly Q&A session for February. So our live Q&As are the first Sunday of every month. And it's with the Tower Guild staff. And our next workshop is with the fabulous Certified Tarot Master, Corby Mitlide, and it's the Sorting Hat Spread she's going to be doing. So that's just going to be a lot of fun. And then at the end of the month, it's Sunday, February 27th, readings, setting the stage, how to prepare so you can give great readings every time with our own Mary Brown right here. So that's some of the stuff coming up, Mary. Lots of stuff going on, right? Did I lose Mary? No, Mary muted Mary. herself and forgot. <laughs> oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> but Boon no, we have lots and lots of good stuff coming up. I get it. It, can I ask a question about a lot of uh, – just one question that popped into my head sure. while you were talking about your two, two fur. Yeah. What if, what if your, you know, bestest, bestest friend and companion is your dog? Can you use the adoption date to do a numerology thing? Well, it's you know, crazy it's exactly question. this – you know, it's the exactly exactly the same thing with animals as it is with humans, and I've actually done that in the past. And um, <gasps> of course, I'm not a oh. pet psychic. I'm I'm telling everybody right now, I'm not a pet <laughs> psychic. Okay, you know, I love pet psychics. They are fabulous on air. Everybody loves them. Yes, you know, the difficulty with animals is is finding their actual date of birth, not their date of adoption, but when they actually were born oh. because that because that's going to tell you where uh where they were as far as it's kind of like astrology okay so in astrology your sun sign and and your entire natal chart is based on the fact that the the second you were born look up these are the astronomical bodies and where they were it's kind of the same mm-hmm. thing with numerology almost impossible because uh, only because you know, most people don't know the exact birthday of their pet, especially if they're a rescue, yeah. you know, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, that, does, that doesn't mean you can't do anything. Of course, you could take a look at uh, the, uh, what, what you mentioned, the adoption date, because although it's not going to give you that information uh, that you would get with the, with the birth numbers, you are going to get – some information because it's such a significant event in the pet's life, the animal's life, the mm-hmm. dog, the cat, the parakeet, the goldfish. I don't care. Uh, no, but uh, um, the horse, you know, uh, groundhog. Anyway, oh, uh, when duck. they were adopted, when they were adopted is significant, and it's like moving from. Let's say you move. Uh, You lived at one place for like 20 years, and then you moved to another house. Well, it's going to have a different address with a different name of the street and different numbers. So you're going to get a different um, group of numbers from that, and it's going to be a completely different energy. So the same thing happens when a pet is adopted. Uh, The energy shifts. So you can take a look at their uh, adoption date for sure. And then, of course, their name. You know, humans have – you know, two, three, sometimes ten names. You know, <laughs> but uh, animals often have maybe one, or if if they, a lot of humans like to add in the family name. You know, and so that's fine too. And so yeah, we can look at uh, their individual name, Fido. You know, or uh, you know, Melanie, or wh- <laughs> whatever the name is, and uh, or if, the, if you use the P. whole Biggles name, you can worth. do both. <laughs> Yeah, see, we would put that in the numerology calculator and turn those letters into digits, uh, into numerals, and we could do a calculation there, and you're going to be able to 
get something about their uh, uh, personality, um, even their soul urge. You know, people think that animals don't have that, but they do. They have soul urges. They have personalities, obviously, and destiny numbers, life paths, and so forth. And so we can take a look at all of that, and you can even compare it with, you know, the uh, uh, the that animal's person, <laughs> their chart. Yes. Wow. That is so cool. Okay. Fascinating. <laughs> you're going to get a so, lot of – you're going to be reading a lot of pets now because – Oh, I my God. I feel it coming. <laughs> I feel it co- – thanks for asking that, though, because almost no one asks that, and it's, it is kind of fun, you know. So, yes, yeah. it can be a pet or animal in your care, you know, or you're in their care, depending on how you look at it. And, uh, you know, uh, but it, it can also be your boss, your coworker, your children, your parents. Family, um, friends, colleagues, yeah, just about anybody. So we have – oh, I just wanted to say real quickly, we only have a few minutes left in the show, so we're going to go to this phone call. Uh, if we don't get to your call today, uh, because we had so much fun with Daniel, um, we will yeah. be on tomorrow, of course. Sharona will be doing her show, Magic Universe, same bat time, same bat channel. All you got to do is uh, come over to thetarotguild.com forward slash chat. And we will have swapped out the player for tomorrow's show. It will be available, the player tomorrow, to listen. And you can join us in the chat room there. I get to be the guest. And we're talking the lover's card. And we're talking about the number six in the world year of six. But we're also taking your phone call. So if we don't get you today, call in tomorrow. Uh, Let's see who's been waiting the longest. We're going to go with that area code 781 that I mentioned before. Caller, are you still there? Yes, hello. Hi, hon. What's Hi. your name? Where are you calling in from? Hi, I'm from Boston. I'm Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi, Laura. What so, do you want to um, talk about today? Yeah, so I'm in this um, like temporary internship kind of training, and um, mm. I'm being disrespected by my instructor, and I just kind of wanted to um, – understand like a little bit about um the dynamics there like do other people see what's going on i guess that's my main question mm-hmm. okay that's interesting it is um, it's a great do, question. do other people see what's going on yeah hmm you know i i'd have to say yes I'm not getting any of the typical cards that would reveal that something is shadowed or not being seen. So like the moon card, the seven of swords, I guess. Right, Mary? Seven of swords would be another good one. Things like that. Instead, I'm getting an interesting bookended reading where it's two major arcana cards on each side of the ten of swords. So we got the ten of swords in the middle. And we've got the world card on one side and the star card on the other. That's three yeses. So, yeah, cool. definitely, mm-hmm. for sure, other people are seeing this. Not only that, it seems, you know, when the central focus card is the Ten of Swords, and there's the dawn coming up, the sun's coming up in the background, the, the dark skies are being abated, they're being pushed back, you know, uh, and, and you can see the... Um, the yellow, which is optimism, the color of optimism. You see the yellow coming up there. And the Ten of Swords is, is about, you know, a finality to something, a complete and utter ending. It's overkill. Mm. I mean, the, the figure has ten swords in their back, you know. <laughs> mm. So it could be, you know, stabbing you in the back, literally. However, um, I feel like the wheels are in motion and it's like coming to an end a, 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 fi- a finality to it, and then a new day is dawning in the background. And with the star card, which is you know literally the card of hope, right? And the wheel, uh, sorry, not not the wheel, uh, the the world. I meant to say, saw the W. My mind went nuts. Uh, mm-hmm. the, with the with the world card, you know that is a, a card of completion as well, and it's wholeness mm-hmm. and connection and options 
coming up for you. So, yeah, I get a really positive feeling that this dynamic is going to change for you. Um, mm-hmm. And, and I, I really zeroed in on the yes, no thing uh, a lot less. So uh, what you had mentioned before about, you know, what's going on with that person, what's the dynamic. Let's see what Mary's getting, though. She might have some more insight. Mary? Mm. You know, the it, it, the cards come, that come up in response to this, I, I think what it is is I was kind of taking into account, like, everything you said and just really, you know, I'm empathic. Mm-hmm. I'm just feeling it, you know. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. what the cards are saying about this is, like, yeah, okay, the sun card comes up. Yeah, it's, you know, it's obvious to everybody, okay. It's okay. Not, a, yeah. not a secret, not, none of that. But, um. Look, you're, you, the only reason you're even doing this, right, is to develop your skills. Oh, we have yeah. the eight, eight of uh, pentacles there. So, you know, you're, and the three pentacles. So it's like you're working towards, like, developing yourself and, and your abilities and your skill set. You're getting what you need out of it, and you've got to just really, you know, seven of pentacles at the end there. you you, you got to wait for the whole thing to, you know, to get out of it what you're there to get out of it and yeah. as much as you can because the five of pentacles is like pushed down under everything five of pentacles sometimes yeah it's money issues but really to me so often it has to do with our self-esteem and mm-hmm. I feel like this person's like stepping on that and yep. you've got to kind of like not allow it you know don't let it eat at you because mm, yeah. you're there to get what you want out of it you deserve to be there and you deserve mm-hmm. to like not have this person be an obstacle in your path yeah okay all right so that Thank that's you. what i get absolutely i hope that helps you out laura very much thank you Thanks great for the have call. a great weekend you too. yeah yes Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Uh, it's going to be nice. Uh, I, I get to hang out with Sharona tomorrow and That's gonna talk be my fun. favorite topics. Right, yeah. right. And by the way, anybody listening, you know, if you want to call in, you know, not just for a reading, of course, we'll do a, you know, pull some cards for you. But um, if you want to know your uh, personal year number for 2022, you know, we can do that for you as well because uh, the world goes through a nine-year cycle. Where it, it's a you know big cosmic uh, thing. Go, you know, as we travel through the solar system on this uh, little blue uh, spaceship we call Earth, <laughs> and then but each of us individually, we go through uh, nine-year cycles, but they're based on your birth date. So. Some people are in alignment with the world year number, but most people are somewhere else in the nine years. So, you know, it's a six year return to balance and harmony. And we'll talk about that on tomorrow's show, but you're somewhere in your nine year cycle. So you want to find out what your personal year is and, and look how that lines up with the world year. You know, is is that number at odds? with a world year of six or in alignment with it, or what does that all mean? So we'll be talking about that on the show tomorrow too. It's going to be a lot of fun, Mary. Yeah. I got to tune into that. I'm like, what am I having like a five year or something? (laughs) I don't know. I think that's what yours was. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking here. um, It comes from your, so you're a four life path, right? Um, a twenty-two the, four. Yeah, but the uh, right master number twenty-two. You're the master builder, and mine's thirty-three six. I'm I'm the master teacher, master lumen, and master healer. Sorry, master healer number. That's why I'm attracted to teaching, teaching tarot, and all the esoteric stuff. But also attracted to things like hypnotherapy and helping people and healing. Um, but the your Personal year number actually comes from your attitude number, and that number is based on the month you were born plus the day you were born. Mm, Six, 26, which is eight. 
My attitude number is eight, I guess. Eleven plus fifteen. Mm. Well, I'm not sure. What did what did you say your uh, birth month was? November. Oh, you're November. That's eleven, right? So plus uh, yeah. what day was it? Twenty six. Or 15. what? Oh, 15. No, That's it, where you it, got the 26. So it's an 8. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And then um, we take the 8 and we add it to the 6 world year and we get 14. 1 plus 4 is 5. However, think about Darn card it. 14. It, it's, a, it's a temperance year. It's, it's a <sighs> year of balancing things out, you know? And remember, it's not just five. You have that one and that four energy. So uh, self, working on self, and four, structure, establishing structures, foundations, and, of course, that's in alignment with your life path. And uh, you also have to look at it, okay, yeah, a lot of times we say five, chaos, chaos year. You know, Yeah, it can devolve in that, but here early in the year, if you know you're in a five-year Instead of allowing it to spiral down into chaos, instead, you can take the reins, and it's also a high energy and adventurous year, and you can go that direction with the energy instead. There's always two sides to the coin. I like the the other side, yeah, that you just talked yeah, about. Yeah, go with that. <laughs> energy I'll and go with that. adventure. Take advantage of that. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, it, you have a lot of energy. You can establish a lot of foundations right now. You, you know, it would be a great year to write the book and uh, publish the deck and, you know, uh, other Do the thing. foundational things. Do the thing. Yeah. But just don't sign any contracts or make any big changes this year. You know, <laughs> this is not the year, you know, you know, don't get divorced. Sorry, Perry. Uh, I was going to say, don't get married, but you're already married. So the only thing you can do is get divorced. You know, sorry, Perry. No. Um, and, uh, y- you know, uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, it's not, it's not a good year for you to like, uh, move, buy a new house, uh, go to education. That would be next year. You want to wait till next year, you know? Uh, but, uh, yeah, sense. don't sign any contracts. Don't buy anything big this year. You know, hold on to that car for one more year before you have to, you know, get a new car, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to keep that in mind. There you go. So if you want to hear more of this, tune in tomorrow, folks. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Fun show today, Mary. Yes, thanks for being here too, Dax, and thanks to all our listeners yeah. out there and in the chat room and in archive later. You know, we don't care when you listen. Yeah. We're just thrilled that, that you're here to to have this experience with us, and I am having a great time. And I'll see you in the chat room tomorrow when you tune in. Hopefully you'll get yes. in the chat room with us. Awesome. I'll be there. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Mary. Bye, everybody. Bye, Dad. Good night, Mary Ellen. <laughs> Good night, John Boy. <laughs>